Let's be radically honest. There's a reason why you decided to become the professional or entrepreneur that you are today. Is it safe to say that it wasn't to be away from those you love or sacrifice yourself and your health while doing it? What if you could create the life and business of your dreams without working harder? What if stress and overwhelm were a thing of your past? Entrepreneurial success coach Ranchelle Van Bryce is here to guide you through letting go of comparison and imposter syndrome so that you can stop making a living and start creating your epic life. An epic life. I'd like some of that, please. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce, and we are here on Inspired Choices Network. Here with me, Ranchelle, on Ignite Your Success. And uh, whether you're joining me live or you're listening afterwards, I appreciate the time that you're here and the energy that it takes to be here. Uh, I'm an energy being. And so when people take time, I'm like, well, thank you so much. So much appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to continue the trek. I'm talking about quantum leaps. And today we're going to talk about ignoring conventional approaches. But before I share a little bit more about what that looks like, um, let me introduce myself formally. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce, and I am an entrepreneurial success coach. Lately, I've been trying on the hat of sacred art uh, of business coach. And so, which um, you may or may not know what that is, but it's a new academy and new business that I'm starting called the Sacred Art of Business. And as I was trying to come up with, you know, that proverbial, what do you do, Ranchal? And I've been working with the PR firm and all of those kinds of things. You know, sometimes I, I, I thought to myself, it was much easier when I had the curves and people said, what would you do? And I would say, I own a curves franchise. And it was clear. Um, this coaching thing is great. You know, it's clear yeah, with your coaching. When I first started to coach in 2000 and, oh my goodness, I'm aging myself now, 11, I think it was. And I would say I was a coach, people like, oh, what sport do you coach? And I'd be like, hmm, because at that time, the only coaches out where there were sports coaches, it, life coaching, business coaching wasn't even really a thing. And so I changed what my name of what I was doing to consulting as a business consultant, although a lot of my time was spent coaching and then people could understand. It's interesting to me how things have transitioned um, over the last ooh, 10, 13 years uh, when you talk about being a coach, people have more, a little bit more of an idea of what that looks like. So today, in front of all of you, I'm trying on the hat of Sacred Art of Business Coach, because I do believe that, you know, having a business, um, having a relationship with business is an art. And I believe that we should, uh, our businesses should be sacred. And if we approach our businesses with what I refer to as the three pillars, which is sacred commerce, sacred economics and sacred love, uh, it just would change the way that we show up in business and change how we do business. And so I'm excited to kind of explore with all of you what that what that looks like. Uh, today, in talking about a quantum leap, and the third prong of the quantum leap is ignoring conventional approaches. And I decided at the beginning of this year to continue talking about quantum leaps because I think quantum leaps are possible. And, you know, when I had the Curves franchises or when I had the sales and marketing agency as a business consultant, we always talked about growth and it was progressive growth and it was um, incremental growth and it was controlled growth. Um, because there is some truth to that. If you grow too fast and, you know, I, I've experienced this myself and when I work with companies, sometimes they have um, an exponential growth in their company. And with that comes some different challenges if you don't have your systems in place or processes in place that can cause a little bit of havoc. However, the difference between, I guess, the conventional like stair-step approach to growth and a quantum leap is really looking at your business uh, completely differently, being radically honest about the strengths of you, the, perhaps as the business owner, whether you're the CEO or the CVO or the CMO or whatever you call yourself, uh, and but looking at it through a, a completely different lens. So the quantum leap process that I talk about really was originated by when I um, read a book. I like to give credit where credit's due. U squared by Price Pritchett is where I started this venture. And he, uh, I love it. And, it. and he really talks about quantum leaps. And that was my first awareness of what a quantum leap could look like. And then I studied universal laws by Rand Raymond Hollywell is the person that I study under uh, with, I shouldn't say under, he's 
passed a long time ago, but I study with that. And I decided to marry the quantum leap um, system and process, the blueprint, the steps with universal laws and to create my own methodology of what a quantum leap could look like. And so the other, um, this, been, this will be a third episode on a quantum leap. Uh, please feel free. Would love for you to go back and listen to the other steps as well. Although you do not need to listen to those to really be with me here today and to get what you need to out of uh, out of today. So don't feel like you're going to be lost um, if you haven't heard the other steps. So today is really about ignoring conventional approaches. And I'm you know, going to share with you two quotes from Price Purchase book, which uh, I love. So the one quote is, if the things you're doing have quit working, stop doing them. I know that's a mic drop, but truly, if the things you have have uh, you're doing have quit working, stop doing them. Focus on what works. If you'll just uh, quit what you've been doing instead of doggedly doing it harder, you at least create an opportunity, some white space to do something else. So that's the first quote. And the second one that we're going to talk about is quantum leaps come when you seek the deeper or the elegance solution. Uh, so look for an approach characterized by simplicity, precision, efficiency, neatness. It won't be as complex or time consuming as your present struggle. Overall, it will be less demanding of your energies and emotions, and it probably will not be familiar to you. So quantum leaps are, you know, can feel super scary because A, we're not familiar with what a quantum leap is. And it's it's asking us to do things that we normally do. So in this particular case, we're talking about ignoring conventional approaches. So what would be a conventional approach in, in your business? Well, everyone's business, a conventional approach might look um, different, right? But if we just look at business in general, right, we have, uh, I talk about four pillars of business. There's um, marketing, there's sales, there's operations, and then I believe personal development should also be a, a, a pillar for business. Because if we're not working on ourselves, um, it's difficult to grow a company, right? Uh, because we face things every single day that uh, that we to look at and, and problem solve. But that right there is a conventional approach is what problem am I solving? And so a different approach, a non-conventional approach would be to look at your business and look at it from a solutions oriented place, meaning what solutions am I looking to resolve? Um, so you can look at it just the slight shift of mindset, the slight shift on when you look at conventionally look at things can lead you to a different way of looking at your business, a different relationship with your business. You know, a non-conventional approach would be something like, what if there were no problems, right? What if there was only opportunities and the only reason why I thought something was a problem was because I was giving meaning to it. And that meaning then, um, usually if it's a, a, a meaning that doesn't feel good, we just use that, doesn't feel good, meaning then there's some angst and stress and frustration and worry and doubt and fear around it. But if we look at it as there are no problems, and I can't make a mistake. What if you couldn't make a mistake? What if there was no right way or wrong way is another non-conventional way to look at things. But everything was an opportunity. And everything you could you everything that came towards you came about in your in your business was a way for you to to go further, to expand further. Uh, and all you needed to do was expand in that. And so what solutions would you would you need? What would that kind of look like? You know, so we have conventional approaches we have <clears throat> to building a business, marketing, a conventional way. And, and, and so there's convention always. So there's what can we do non-conventionally in convention? Marketing, and from my perspective, the definition is a combination of advertising, networking, public relations, and promotions, right? So if you break marketing down to the most four, four basic principles, which I've talked about before, and so let's just look at marketing as far as networking. What and if networking isn't working for you, um, the first piece I would say is what do you want your networking to do, right? Like be clear about what networking is for. 
if you're looking for networking to create, you know, more relationship that might eventually lead into a client type of relationship, that's one thing, right? That's one way to look at it. Other people will look at networking as building their brand. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a return on investment of clients, but a return on investment of more exposure, more brand awareness, more recognition, you know, and it can be simple recognition like, oh, uh, I recognize your name and when you're standing in the grocery store or, oh, I've seen real estate agents will experience this that they do like billboards. Oh, I see your you, I see your face on the bus stop or the, or the billboard. So that's a conventional way in real estate to do it, but not necessarily a conventional way for coaches to show up in, in um, advertising, right, in the marketing world. So we can take a look at these conventional approaches and then ask ourselves, what would be a, a non-conventional or unconventional way that I can approach my business, knowing what I know? What am I doing that, it, like I call them my groundhog digs, what am I doing and I keep on expecting a different result and how could I how could I make changes to that? How could I approach that differently? How could I look at it differently? What business models can I model and use it in uh, in my business right now that's not conventionally done? Right. So just because it's not done in your industry right now doesn't mean it can't be done in your industry. A non-conventional way of looking at things is to look at your existing industry and look at what you think is broken in the industry. What just drives you absolutely crazy and what's a, a conventional way that you can look at it from that perspective. So for me, um, you know, as a sales and marketing expert, uh, what drives me crazy about the marketing world is you have all of these marketing people, all my people, right, all my colleagues going around and talking about how your life really sucks and that uh, and, and making you feel really bad about who you are and what you do and that there must be something broken with you. But if you buy the yellow widget, then you're no longer broken and everything is perfect and everything is like the rainbow and the unicorn is on the other side of that bridge, but you have to buy their thing to get to the bridge. Now, the truth is um, humanity, like human beings, we only actually take action when we're in enough pain. So it makes logical sense that people in the world of marketing who understand marketing um, use, so I'll, I'll, we, right, because I um, can do that, we will place and talk to you at the level that maybe that you're at, that you're experiencing. So that's, there's some truth to that. Because if you, if your life was like all roses and sunshines and rainbows and unicorns and fairy dust, you would not be seeking a solution to a problem. So there's truth to that, right? That's the human being, us. that's human nature. But the lie what I like to expose to people is there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You're not messed up. And, the, and one widget's not going to make all of your problems go away. However, there's a chances that you're seeking something because you know there's a solution out there. And if you could find the solution on your own, you wouldn't be seeking out. So yes, you're seeking and it's okay to seek, but don't feel bad about seeking. Don't feel bad about who you are. Don't feel like everyone's got their shit figured out except for you, because that's not the truth. Everyone's running around at some level of, <laughs> this is what I tell my kids. So, you know, everyone runs around with some sort of level of fucked up uh, It's what level are you at? And what solution are you looking for to help you move through that level? I mean, right? And so what would that look like for you? So the conventional approach to marketing is I'm going to make you feel really bad about who you are. And then I'm going to offer you a solution. And my solution is the best solution, the only solution. And then everything's going to be perfect at the end of the rainbow. And that's the lie. Right. And so an unconventional approach is to say to people, that's bullshit. Like you're fine. Um, but hey, you might want to hire me because you might have a gap. <laughs> you're seeking something. What if I have the solution? I don't know. Why don't we have a conversation? which is the non-conventional way to sell products and services, right? So you can take a look at your industry, right? And look at what do you believe is broken in your industry and ask yourself, okay, what's broken about this and how would I approach this? If I could wave a magic wand, how would I approach and how would I have everyone else approach this particular situation um, differently than what I'm currently doing? This is a great way to look at things. If you are doing something that keeps on giving you the same results over and over again, Groundhog Day, what does that look like and how can you move through that? 
And the best way to move through your Groundhog Days is, of course, radical honesty um, and looking at things with this new approach of, okay, this is how I'm approaching it. Uh, what else is possible? What could I do differently that I'm not currently doing? Because you're asking a what question, you're posing that out to the universe. The universe must, must respond with an answer. And scientifically, your brain must start to look for the answer. Your reticular activating system kicks in and the answer starts to come to you and often very quickly, right? Which is why I don't recommend you ask why questions. A why question just keeps you in your past, right? You go to your past and it tells you why things are happening. Right. If you don't ask a why question, you stay in your present moment. Right. And you ask what else is possible. Right. What's the truth in this? Show me the way you stay in present moment. If you ask yourself, well, how am I going to do this? How am I going to come up with an unconventional way, Ranshaw? You're projecting yourself into the future. You're asking something that you don't know. And so that that question might project you into the future. And then there's fear because we are afraid of the future because we don't know what it holds. And our brain is wired for survival, not to thrive. So you're projecting yourself. So the present moment question is, well, what else is possible? This is the way that this is the way we always do it. This is the way that the industry does it. OK, great. The industry does it. But do you have to do it that way? What if you didn't have to do that? So that's one way to kind of look at the possibilities of things and start approaching things in a different way, asking yourself, okay, what else is possible? So why don't we head to our first break? Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me here uh, on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Ranchelle Van Bryce, and you are here with me today on Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach, Ranchelle Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchelle Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, before the break, I was talking about, you know, looking at things a little bit differently and having an unconventional approach. One way to do that is to take a look at your business, your profession, and think what's broken about it, what don't I like about it, and asking yourself, okay, what else is possible? Maybe even thinking about it from a perspective of what business model can I follow or what model can I bring into this conventional way and kind of turn it on its head. Other um, ways of looking at our business differently and having an unconventional model is to look at the beliefs that you have around business. And so, uh, and think about like what of those beliefs do you need to let go of? So typically when um, I work with business people, it's like, well, in order to have success, we have to work hard. And the harder we work, the more successful that we are. That's one, um, one conventional way. Another uh, thing I hear over and over again is 
is the working hard, you know, the working hard piece, but that there has to be lots of sacrifice in my life to have a successful business. So time away from family, um, sacrificing health and wellness for a successful business. And so those are two conventional ways of looking at business. And, you know, as I started to unpack those beliefs for myself, and I looked at all the people that were working hard, right, that were really, they were, everything was about business, and they were working long hours and sacrificing their health and wellness and sacrificing their families and, and um, didn't have time for anything. Uh, They were extremely unhappy and actually, by definition, um, maybe not quite as successful as they would have us believe meaning they, meaning the world. So success, of course, can mean different things to different people. You know, when I was working hard, I was striving for and working hard for financial success. And for me, success was when I had X amount of dollars in the bank or did X amount of dollars in revenue, then I was successful. And I share lots on the show here about the story of when we hit my our first million dollars in curves, um, I cried <laughs> because I literally thought like, it would be New Year's Eve and balloons would be coming down with streamers and trumpets would be blowing and the angels would be singing. And I just realized that I nothing had changed other than I had, I was grateful to have the extra zeros in the bank account, but the things that I thought would change did not change because then I was afraid of losing it. I was afraid that if I stopped working that damn hard, I would actually lose everything that I had worked so hard for. So I continue to strive and I continue to sacrifice relationships and my health for money. Um, And I, you know, I call that my prostitution energy, right? Working really, really hard for money. Um, And, you know, so that energy kept on showing up at different, at different phases of my life until one day I realized that I actually wasn't searching for or seeking money, although that's what it was disguised at. And it wasn't actually really even freedom that I was looking for because I didn't even really know what that meant. But it was me, it was a liberation. I was looking for a liberation from conventional ways. I was seeking liberation from um, from the regular grind. Uh, I was looking for peace and serenity. And that none of that actually was outside of me. It only could be in, it was only within me. I had to access it within me. My methodology for doing that, one uh, one methodology is to follow the universal laws, to create that peace and harmony and serenity that I so craved uh, in order for me to build the business that I want. So my business is a vehicle to the life that I want, but I'm clear about the life. And I had it backwards at curves. I had I thought about the business and that the million dollars would bring me the life that I wanted, but it didn't because I was so busy worried about the million dollars. I missed I missed out on so much. So an unconventional way, you know, to look at business that way is like, what if it wasn't about more, what if it wasn't about more money? I mean, the truth is we, we require cash flow to live, right? I can't go to the bank with buttons or, or, you know, exchange like a a chicken. I don't have chickens, by the way, but exchange a chicken, you know, for, uh, for, to pay my mortgage. It doesn't work that way. So money is essential. Right. Money is essential. And so what we're seeking, though, I think is fulfillment Um, that came up in a morning group that I lead every morning. What we're searching for is fulfillment. And so where does fulfillment come? So an unconventional, a new way of approaching business is this. okay? if I'm not searching for and seeking for the almighty dollar, if I'm not working towards that, if that's not my definition, uh, uh, looking at the business in an unconventional way is what? am I looking for? What am I seeking and searching? What would that look like for me? And what beliefs do I have to let go of in order for that to happen? I had to let go of the belief of working hard for money. I had to let go of making sacrifices. I had to let go of the belief that I wasn't smart enough to do this. I had to let go of the belief, you know, a belief of I can't figure stuff out. I had to let go of pretty much um, every belief that I had that had brought me to that point in time. And I think that's the key is our beliefs, our values get us to a certain place. And then then we need to look at that and go, is that still serving me? Is that still serving my higher good? And if it's not, then we have the opportunity to let it go and change. And that can be hard, that that can be hard, right? Change is not is not an easy thing because we're wired a certain way. We're programmed a certain way. 
But once we figure out for each one of us individually what that looks like, then it becomes easier and easier. A new habit of transformation, a habit of transcendence happens because we look at our lives differently. So an unconventional way is to look at your life and go, okay, what's working and what's not? And what's the common belief? What's the common denominator? And then what, what, how do I have to, or what do I, is required of me to have this new approach, this unconventional way, right? Um, funny story. So, uh, you know, my, um, the partner that I'm with right now, Rob, uh, is uh, not the father of my children. So, right. So my kids have a, have a, a stat, their dad's name is Darcy. So he was my husband. And so when Darcy and I split up years later, uh, Rob and I got together and, I remember sitting and thinking that I was struggling, really struggling at a particular time in my relationship with Rob. And one of my friends said, you know, is it worth it, Rancho? Maybe you should just exit the relationship. And, you know, I paused and I said, the, the funny thing is, is the struggles I'm having with him are the same struggles I'm ha I had with Darcy. What's the common denominator? <laughs> common denominator is me. Perhaps maybe uh, what I need to look at and pause and reflect upon is how do I show up in relationship? Now I share this story with you because if you if you own a business and you're facing the same things over and over again, if it's a common denominator, uh, it's probably you. How are you showing up in your business, right? What mindset do you have? What thought process? What's your attitude? you know, about business. If you, for example, hate Facebook, but you're trying to use Facebook to build a business, I got to tell you, Facebook is not going to respond by giving you clients, right? Um, because if you hate Facebook, it's an energy. So the, you know, so the, just imagine like the energy of Facebook going, well, she really doesn't like us, but maybe she'll like us if we send her more clients or it might be, well, she doesn't really like us. So let's go over here to the people who love Facebook. So that's what I imagine when, it, you know, all of these energies, these, the, right, the entity of Facebook, you know, having an energy to it and, and going, okay, like, what is my relationship with Facebook? And, you know, what does that look like? And so an unconventional approach in, in marketing is to look at it and go, everything has energy. What words am I saying? What am I talking about in marketing? What's the energy that I'm putting out? Right. And, um, and, how is that reaping any benefit for you at all? Or what kind of benefits are you reaping? Because even if it's not a successful, let's say, marketing funnel, there's still opportunity for you to learn from that. So this unconventional approach is really sitting back and, and looking at your business or your profession and going, doing like a, you know, a, a complete analysis of here's all the things that are working and here's all the things that could be working better. And here's the things that are actually not working at all. And how much time do you spend on the things that aren't working at all, right, uh, to make them better? And is that really where you should be spending your time? Should you be spending your time on trying to make the things that don't work better? Or could you uh, have a new approach? Um, could you maybe look at the things that are working well and go, what would happen if I spent more time there? And, you know, sometimes that's making some tough decisions. We um, recently, and with the Clarity Confidence Connection Summit, we were going to do an event here in Red Deer, an in-person event, and we pulled the plug on Monday and decided not to. And it was because truly I was I'm working on this quantum leap in my own business. And I went, that's the conventional way that I've always done things. And is that really the best way for me to have the most impact on my community. And, you know, I looked at the time and effort it takes to put together an in-person local event in Red Deer um, and the effort that it would take to, to do an in-person three-day event in Oahu uh, in November, the effort is the same. And so, but if it's in Oahu with other people and it's a bigger approach uh, and we access the networks that we have, the effect, the, the long term, the short term and long term effect is broader, is more expansive. The message that Samantha, Candace and myself have gets to be to a global audience. That's one of the reasons why I love doing this show is I have an opportunity to speak to you wherever you are in the world. 
um, is the reason why I chose Inspired Choices Network to do that. And so when I look at the conventional approach of my business, it was do local events and speak locally. And that worked for a really long time until, until it didn't. And so it's kind of like, if I go back to that, I'm trying to work on something that doesn't have the effect that I want because I got stuck in this conventional, that's the way that I've always done it. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What else is possible? Well, Oahu was possible. So it's like, why would we not do a Clarity Confidence Connection event, in an in-person event in Oahu? And so these are some of the things that when you're looking at your business and your life, it's not even just business, but taking a look at your life and going, you know, what's working really well in my health and what's not, what's working really well in my, in my wealth or, you know, finances or relationships. And just being radically honest is so very, very important. So, all right, let's go to our next break. Thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Ranchal. You're on Inspired Choices Network or and with me, Ignite Your Success with Ranchal. Thank you. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it, would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchell. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Whether you're joining me or live or you're listening afterwards, certainly appreciate you being here with me. Uh, as the commercial indicated, I'm easy to get a hold of. You absolutely can email me. Sometimes, though, it's easier, you know, when you're on Facebook or Insta or LinkedIn, uh, you know, just search for me at, for at Ranchell. So at, and then my name, R-A-N-C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. That's how easy I am to find. You could probably Google me too, um, you know, but don't judge me on some of the pictures because some of those pictures are from early 2000, right? So, you know, just, just be, you know, just no judgment. However, you can Google me easy to find come connect with me let's spend some time and, and let's hang out uh also another in, unconventional way to you know to, to have people connect uh the unconventional way is a lot of fun you can take a look at you know all the ways that uh your business in your industry does things and go you know do i love that about my industry or do i not like that at all or am i meh how is it a meh about that part of the industry? And do you have a desire to change what that looks like? And it, you might not have a desire to change, but I just know like in the world of coaching, for example, um, you know, when you hire a coach, it's a per session rate or it's like a, a package rate or things like that. And those just never felt really good to me, right? You know, um, so I set my business up when I didn't have packages and I really didn't have like, per hour sessions is like, here's a set amount of time, you know, I'd like to hang out with you and spend some time with you. And what does that look like? And, you know, how many times a, a, a month do you want to see me? And okay, let's work out, you know, what that would look like. And oh, and here's another thing that I do. And why don't you come hang out? That's really how I how I function in my business. It allows me the um, freedom to work with really cool people 
because they uh, they um, can adapt <clears throat> to that kind of structure, number one. Uh, and two, it, it really puts, I think, from my perspective, the client in the driver's seat, which I think is really important. When you get into a coaching relationship with someone, it, be it becomes a very connected relationship. And so, you know, one of the things that I noticed over and over again when I had coaches is that um, there was almost this uh, a hierarchical view of uh, – Yes, leadership, but this, for me, it was really skewed, a skewed view of what things looked like. And so I wanted to not have that same relationship with my, with my clients. I wanted a real, a real, not that that's otherwise not real, but a real relationship with my clients where there was a mutual respect and a full understanding that I'm a human being as well. And some days I can show up brilliantly and some days I'm going to, you know, be in a fetal position uh, on my bed, just wanting to sleep as well, right? And that uh, that to not set myself up or apart from that perspective. And so that was another way that I looked at my business differently, my industry different. That's an unconventional approach, right? My clients have access to me all the time. If they're having a challenge, they don't have to wait till their next session. I don't believe that. I believe if there's crisis happening that, you know, why would you wait? So like, right, why would you wait seven days and be in crisis for that long when a lot of times situations um, that I work with can be can be talked through in a very, very short period of time and often through text. It's an unconventional way. Right. And so I'm really encouraging you to take a look at your business, your industry and seriously do a deep dive into it and go, OK, like what about this is not working? And what about it is working? That's just as an important question because it's about like the strength in your business or the strength in how you show up and how can you do more of that? So I call it your superpower. What's your superpower and how can you do more of that in your business, right? So if, you're, if your superpower is um, cleaning toilets, uh, you know, how can you do more of that? If your superpower is connecting with people, how can you do more of that? If your superpower is sales, how can you do more than that, right? If your superpower is educating, how can you do more of that? Like really thinking about it from that perspective and letting go of this idea that we have to do it all. I think that's the biggest challenge that I find with solopreneurs um, is that they feel like they're an island on, you know, onto themselves. Like they have to do everything. And so they become the chief um, officer of everything versus the chief executive officer. They lose the position of the CEO. So another unconventional way to look at your business if you're a solopreneur is, can you let go of being a solopreneur? And there's been real pride in that. Can you let that go and can you become the CEO of your company? If you were the CEO of your company, how would you show up differently? What would you, how would you feel? What would you do differently? And how is your business structured? Right? So from a business structured perspective, you know, the businesses, uh, you know, will have not always, but have a CEO, a chief executive officer. Oh, they might have a COO, a chief operations officer. They might have a CFO, a chief financial officer. They might have a COO, chief operations officer. And as a solopreneur, you're all of that. You're right. You're so I'm the I'm the I'm the CEO, the CFO, the CMO. Uh, I'm the coach, <laughs> right? In it as well. And so all of those hats can be feel like a, like the business is floundering and struggling. And I believe it's because you don't have a necessarily a clear definition or a job description. I could even do that of, of what it is that you're company is structured like in what is it doing when you go to hire somebody are you hiring for a are you hiring a person are you hiring for a position because that's different so I would su suggest that as a solopreneur an unconventional way is to look at your business as hiring for positions who do you need on your team and the challenge we have as solopreneurs is we want one person to fit all of those team members and a great example would be a lot of people in my industry have a virtual assistant and they hire a virtual assistant. And what happens is they're, they want a virtual assistant, but then they're asking their virtual assistant to like, oh, hey, could you do like my website 
design. Oh, hey, could you do my Facebook right posts? Oh, hey, could you, you know, do this? Oh, hey, could you do that? And then the, the virtual assistant has really strong skills and assets, starts doing things that that their clients are asking them, but it's not necessarily something A, that they love or B, that they might have a skill set. Like it's one thing to post on Facebook, but there's an actual psychology to posting on Facebook. And so successfully, um, and, and, and I say that depending, I guess, on what you want Facebook to do. <laughs> so there's what there's clarity is important of what you want that position, the person you're hiring in that position to do. Because if you're wanting them to post on, like take your thoughts and post on Facebook on your behalf, that's one thing. But if you're asking them to be a social media manager, that's a completely different skill set. The skill set that's required is the psychology of posting, when to post, how to post, what to post, how to mimic your voice, what does your brand mean? You know, what are the what are the what are the insights telling them and then analyzing the data and then looking at, OK, what does that look like? Now, it's a skill set that a virtual assistant can learn if they want to. But if they don't want to, then what does that look like for them? So it's like, don't ask your virtual assistant to do something that they don't want to do, because in your head, you've hired a social media manager. Right. It's like it's a it's like clearly understand what you're looking for in your business. It's, you know, and I'll and I'll see that someone who who hires a website developer. Um, but the website developer isn't doesn't necessarily isn't a graphic artist. Most of the times they're not. Right. Sometimes they are, but most of the times they're not. So you might need to hire a graphic designer, which is different than a graphic artist, by the way, a graphic designer to work with your website person and have them uh, contact and connect, right? You might have someone that says, oh yeah, I can totally write your emails for you, but they don't have copywriting skills, right? They just write people's emails, but that doesn't again mean that that's not a good thing. It's just what, what do you want that position to do? So be clear of the who you're going to need on your team as you expand your business. So the unconventional way is to look at your business as a solopreneur and go, I'm, yes, I'm uh, an individual uh, in my company, but I'm the CEO of my company. And eventually I'm going to need these following people on my team to help me grow my business to the level that I desire. So that, for example, a coach can remain coaching and may not want to do their social media or their email marketing series, or create Facebook posts, or put up the Facebook posts. But they don't know that because they're looking at their business from a solopreneur perspective, which means uh, alone, solo, one, right? Become a CEO of your company, create a business structure that changes the dynamic of, of how you show up in your company very, very quickly because then you realize you own a company. And there is a difference. So here's the other unconventional approach. There's a difference between owning a coaching practice and a coaching business, right? And the words can be kind of muddled, like lawyers have a law practice, chiropractors have a practice, dentists have a practice, right? Doctors have a practice because they're practicing medicine or practicing law. But the truth of the matter is they have a damn business. Right. They have a business and they're in their in their practice and they have to remove themselves from their practice and become a business owner slash CEO. And that that is a bit of a gap that happens. Right. So the unconventional way to look at a practice would be what if it was a business? What if I owned what if I owned a law practice and I wasn't a lawyer? How would I structure a law practice differently, not knowing anything about how to practice law? How would I structure my business differently if I owned a law firm? It's a great question to ask, right? Because it really allows you to look at things through a, a, through a different lens. So we um, don't have, I mean, we certainly are coaching, but you know, I'm a coach in a coaching business. I happen to coach in my coaching business, but what if I didn't? What if I wanted to bring coaches on and I wanted to move into the CEO position? 
what would that look like? You know, and so it's through these unconventional questions, these unconventional methods and ways that we can look at our business and create the quantum leap. If you're the only person in your business and you are doing all the things that you're doing, the bottleneck that is um, is in looking at your business as if you're, you're the only one doing it. And a quantum leap can happen, but something's going to need to shift within that. And so by approaching it this way, that's where the shifts can start to happen. It's like, oh, I never, I never thought of myself as having a, right, um, a coaching business, a law firm business, a law business, uh, you know, a business of medicine, right? Um, and but that's the truth. I mean, right? All of a sudden, they're like HR stuff that they're talking, and you know, on on and bookkeeping and all the things and all the things and not prepared because you know we didn't when we went to coaching school we didn't i mean depending on the school you went to talk a little bit about business but they don't talk about becoming the ceo of your company right which is, it's a different shift excellent well thanks for sticking with me so far everyone appreciate you let's go to our uh, last our third and last break Thank you so much. My name is Ranchel. You're here on Inspired Choices Network, and uh, the show is Ignite Your Success with Ranchel. Many of us view success as something that you arrive at, something you pursue, something that you will have to make happen. What if you ignited success within yourself? What if you viewed success differently, changed the way you look at it? Would you feel differently about yourself and your journey? Tuning in to Ignite Your Success with entrepreneurial success coach Ranchel Van Bryce, you'll receive tools and insight to ignite your very own success differently. Join Ranchel Wednesdays on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific. Welcome back to Ignite Your Success with Ranchel. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to rvb at igniteyoursuccess.ca. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm talking about your quantum leaps, and one of the steps in a quantum leap is looking at the way that you're doing things and maybe taking an unconventional approach looking at, you know, what's working really well in the business and what's not, and what's not working as well, what's not working at all, and focusing maybe more on, on the solutions versus I have this problem I'm trying to solve, but what are the solutions, what are the solutions, and how can I spend more time doing the things that are already um, successful, and making these just little shifts in mindset, but shifts in attitude and shifts in approach. Uh, I learned this through experience when I had the Curves franchises, so one of the things that Curves did brilliantly was understood um, the psychology behind marketing and sales. And that was my first taste of, uh, of what that looks like. So when I had my first curve, so we opened my first one in 2000, and we had merchandise, right? We had swag, and we weren't allowed to sell the swag. It was only through, uh, through earning, through points. So it wasn't even a point methodology, but it was like, we don't sell it, we give it away. And so, um, so if someone uh, lost, uh, so here's how we, some of the things we did, was every time someone released 10 pounds, they received a t-shirt um, or some sort of gift that of their choice that they had already had, you know, a few t-shirts, they would do that. If someone had come to work out consistently for two weeks as a new member, we gave them a water bottle. Uh, if someone brought in a friend, we gave them a T-shirt or we had like hoodies, like zip ups and sweatshirts and things like that, or cookbooks, um, shaker cups, like we had all these different swag. So the only way that you could receive merch, right, the swag was if there was a, you were, the member was doing something. So it created something called the universal law of reciprocity, right? Someone does something nice for you, you do something nice for them and vice versa. It also increased the brand awareness because all of a sudden you were seeing Curves t-shirts within the center, but Curves water bottles everywhere, Curves stickers everywhere. So there was this brand recognition. It was a brilliant marketing message and no one else was doing it. And, and people had swag, but you had to, you, you, they bought it, 
right? Um, they, they didn't earn it. It wasn't gifted to them. And, you know, it was, um, it was, it was amazing. And it worked for so many years, like for like, oh, six or seven years. Around the eighth year, Curves decided that there was such popularity in the swag that they would start making it. And all the members were like, oh, I love this. I wish I could buy it. Right. So then, of course, uh, Curves International started making, you know, um, jogging pants, sweatpants, uh, more like outfits, like track outfits, more hoodies, more jackets. And um, it really affected the business in a negative way. We, we had way less referrals. We had uh, way less like engagement and fun because people could buy the stuff. So why would they, re- why would they do all the fun things? Why would they refer people? And so they, um, you know, the, the so part of it was certainly listening to your client base of what they want, right? But also, you know, I think the mistake that Curves made was they had a really strong methodology that they let go of that they caved to pressure from some of the curves owners right but also to the members ask the members making decisions as to how our businesses should be run based on what they wanted not knowing the behind the scenes so the unconventional approach was gifting and giving away everything that had huge success the conventional approach was doing what everyone else is doing, right? So it can go backwards for you, right? It can go backwards for you. And so as you look at your business um, over this next week, again, look at, you know, what are you currently doing that's working really well and what's not working really well? And how can you look at that what's not working well unconventionally? How What things can you add? And maybe look at what other people are doing in completely different industries and going, how can we model that? Could we model that in our industry? Would that work? Last but not least is looking at what's broken in your industry and going, that's broken. And how can I show up differently? So those are kind of three key things that you can take uh, take away and, and work on this week. And uh, feel free to join me next week. Uh, we're on a quantum leap um, you know, we're going for the quantum leap. It's 12, 12 week sessions in total. I think we're on week three. Next week, we're going to talk about uh, step four, change your beliefs and change your outcome. So I touched a little bit on it today about your belief systems, but we're going to do a deep dive into some common beliefs. And I'm going to actually share with you some steps, some actual how to's to bust through your beliefs and create some new neural networks. So we're going to do a little bit of brain science next week as well. And so we absolutely want to ensure that moving forward then um, in your quantum leaps as you have this opportunity, as I said, to just pause and take a moment and take a moment and go, okay, what, what does this actually look like? And even your belief around, do you believe a quantum leap is possible? As if you don't believe a quantum leap is possible, then of course you will be right. A quantum leap is not poss- possible. But what we certainly can do um, is look at a conventional way if you don't think a quantum leap is possible. And what if you increased your average um, new clients by 10%? What if you increased your average invoice by 10%? And what if you increased the lifetime value or the annual spend of a client by 10%? Those are incrementals, right? 10%. And what if you did that like 10% a month? What would that look like for you? Well, if you did that, each one of those 10% a month, your company, you know, in, in, in general, these are kind of general pieces, could grow by 300%. 10% in each area actually brings you to a quantum leap. So we can approach it one way where let's take the math and do 10%, right? Which is so much fun, right? Or we can go, okay, what else is possible? Let's look at things unconventionally, which, you know, a 10% increase in new clients every month actually isn't out of range right it's really not out of range and it can be lots of fun to take a look at your business and kind of pull it apart that way in looking at it through a new lens absolutely you know which is uh, which is so much fun so quantum leaps today's uh show was looking at things with an unconventional approach i want to thank you so much for joining me i know some of you are live in the studio so thanks for joining it's great to have you and your energy here Uh, My name is Ranchelle Van Rice. The show is Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. And it's a pleasure having you here with me while we explore what a quantum leap could look like with you um, in your life 
and in your business. Because as always, we think about what else is possible. Wouldn't it be cool if you could create a quantum leap in your business? Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening to Ignite Your Success with Ranchelle. Ranchelle returns Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, be big, be bold, be brilliant, be you.